Welcome back. All right, so we're now going to preview Carolina and the Islanders, and that rounds out the East, and then uh, I'll be able to do the Western previews uh, tomorrow once we know, A, who was playing who, and B, everybody's done the 82-game schedule. Now, uh, I would also want to say for viewers of this channel for years, you'll notice I'm using the same magnets I like to use for these teams in the playoffs. Generally, there have been a couple of changes, but basically I'm, I'm, I'm just... I like to use the same ones. It's kind of fun. Anyway, so Carolina finished the season 52, 23, and 7. They end up being second place in the division, meaning they play third place New York Islanders, who finished the season 39, 27, and 16. Now, of course, the Islanders hiring Patrick Waugh means you have two of the greatest in NHL history at what they've done, and two coaches that look like if they wanted to, they could suit up, and we'd go, yeah, that adds up. That, that works. Although the weird thing is it feels like Brindamore, the player, might be something that the Islanders need, and Patrick Waugh, the goalie, could be something that Carolina needs from a playoff perspective. Now, for Carolina, they've been a contender for a while. They're looking to get over that hump in the quarterfinal, or conference finals. Uh, for the New York Islanders, they're looking to get back to that underdog that can pull off some upsets that they were in 2020 and 2021. So let us discuss. This season, they met four times, and each team won twice. Uh, November 4th, a 4-3 overtime win for Carolina. November 30th, a 5-4 overtime win for the Islanders. On December 23rd, a 5-4 win for the Islanders. March 19th, a 4-1 win for Carolina. So there's not much difference there. Uh, the channel seems to really like Carolina, and we'll talk about that. But uh, yeah, but when these teams have met each other, it's been close. Now on the Carolina side of things, Sebastian Ajo is their leading scorer. And biggest star. 78 games, 36 goals. 53 assists, 89 points. Since the All-Star break, 33 games, 19 goals, 16 assists, 35 points. Uh, Seth Jarvis, he's a star in the making as well. 81 games, 33 goals, 34 assists, 67 points. Uh, since the All-Star break, he's been better. Uh, 33 games, 18 goals, 11 assists, 29 points. Marty Natchez. Natchez, as Jarvis has got better and his totals have gone up, it feels like Natchez has sagged a bit. Uh, 77 games overall, 24 goals, 29 assists, 53 points since the All-Star break. 34 games, 11 goals, 11 assists, 22 points. Tara Vinen, uh, 76 games, 25 goals, 28 assists, 53 points overall since the All-Star break. 28 games, 9 goals, 15 assists, 24 points. Then you got Andrei Svechnikov, a 50-goal scorer that doesn't generally score 50 goals, but he has the talent to do so. Uh, 59 games, 19 goals, 33 assists, 52 points since the All-Star break. 30 games, nine, 8 goals, 14 assists, 22 points. So for the top five scorers, again, there's depth in Carolina. A lot of players that can hurt you. And I, I feel like Svechnikov could be the real wild card here. Because again, he's got so much talent. I know the numbers don't necessarily show you just how much, but it's there. On the Islanders' side, Barzell had quite the year. 80 games, 23 goals, 57 assists, 80 points. Even point per game. Uh, since the All-Star break, 32 games, 10 goals, 19 assists, 29 points. So pretty consistent throughout. Uh, Dobson, his production dropped a bit after the All-Star break, but he's still very productive. Uh, 79 games overall, 10 goals, 60 assists for 70 points. Since the All-Star break, 30 games, 4 goals, 14 assists, 18 points. Brock Nelson, 82 games, 34 goals, 35 assists, 69 points. Very remarkably consistent. Uh, in and, and in the playoffs, he can be a really, really good producer as well. Since the All-Star break, 33 games, 13 goals, 18 assists, 31 points. Bo Horvat. Uh, 80, 81 games played, 33 goals, 35 assists, 68 points. Since the All-Star break, scoring slowed a bit. 33 games, 13 goals, 10 assists, 23 points. Kyle Palmieri, who got his 30th goal last night in their finale. Uh, 82 games, 30 goals, 24 assists, 54 points for Palmieri. He's turned back the clock a bit since the All-Star break. 33 games, 17 goals, 9 assists, 26 points. So from a goal, sp goal scoring perspective, Palmieri's been pretty hot. And then you get to goal, the goaltending. Bit of a question mark with both. Not necessarily about who's going to start to start the series. Obviously, you go with Freddie Anderson. Obviously, at least to me, obviously, it should be Varlamov. But Patrick Wall, who knows? But I could see both goalies getting into the action during the series. Anderson, 13-2 and with a 9.32 save percentage. Since the All-Star break, fantastic. 9-1 and with a 9.51 save percentage. Kachetkov, 23-13-4, 9.11 save percentage. Held the fort while Freddie was hurt. 
Uh, since the All-Star break, 12-6-1 with a 9-23 save percentage. Kachetkov's development is why I think the panic about the goaltending in Carolina really subsided. That plus the return of Freddie Anderson. Uh, then on the other side, you got Varlamov, 14-8-4 overall with a 9-18 save percentage. Uh, since the All-Star break, 8-3-1 with a 9-22 save percentage. I think he's been the better of the two goaltenders. Sorokin, 25-19-12 overall. Uh, 909 save percentage since the All-Star break. 11, 7, and 3 with the 908 save percentage. So again, I feel like the numbers favor Verlamov. We'll see what they do come playoff time, uh, which starts in about 48 hours. And we'll see uh, how long whoever starts the series ends up being the starter. or they, they start all six or seven games, however many. I do feel like while well, last year's series uh, went six games, this one could go seven. This, this absolutely could go seven. Now, for goals four, uh, that favors Carolina, 277 to 245. Goals against favors Carolina. They allowed 211, whereas the Islanders allowed 258. The Islanders and the Capitals, again, being the only teams above the playoff line this year who uh, had a negative goal differential. It's rare. Power play favors Carolina, 26.9% to the 20.4% for the Islanders. Penalty kill dramatically favors the uh, Carolina Hurricanes. It feels like the Islanders need to stay out of the box. 86.4% uh, penalty kill for Carolina, 71.5% for the New York Islanders. Uh, hits really, really favor the Islanders. If this is a really physical series, and it could be, uh, that's one one weakness with Carolina, if you want to call that a weakness. Uh, for the hits, 2000, 2,062 for the Islanders. Uh, the Carolina Hurricanes lowest in the league at 1,383 hits. Block shots, Carolina was last in the league at that area as well. Uh, 1,552 block shots for the Islanders, only 937 for Carolina. Carolina does a really good job of playing a shot suppression game and the whole zone defense kind of thing, and uh, they don't block a lot of shots to do it. Now, if they're leading first, uh, it's very, very important for the Islanders to have the lead first. It's, it's still important for Carolina, but more important for the Islanders. So if they're leading first, Carolina's 35-7 and 4 overall. Uh, if they trail first, they're 17, 16, and 3. The Islanders, 27, 5, and 10 when they score first. When they trail first, 12, 22, and 6. So, uh, again, it's not it's not that surprising if a team isn't as offensively uh, gifted as some of the others that if they allow that first goal, they don't necessarily have the offense to make that comeback. Uh, this is definitely going to be an interesting series in that defensively, Carolina is the better team of the two. But the Islanders are going to have to play really, really solid defense to keep this series close. Uh, one goal games, 531 points percentage for Carolina. Uh, it, I'm surprised that's not higher. On the Islanders' side, 525. So, yeah, one goal games, they're right around 500. Two goal game, well, Carolina 714 in that category. Uh, 533 for the Islanders, so still above 500. Three or more goal difference in a game, 694 points percentage for Carolina. The Islanders don't like that game, 370. So that's where you end up with a negative goal differential. Again, same as the Capitals. If they lose big, they don't necessarily win big, and their, their wins are usually of the closer variety. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. And again, the channel vote, 84% for the Hurricanes. People think, yep, Carolina's going to win this again. So, uh, 2020, the Carolina Hurricanes lost in the first round against Boston in five games, four games to one. 2021, they lost in the second round against Tampa Bay, also in five games, uh, four games to one there. 2022, they got to the second round again, uh, same as the year before, but this time they lost in seven against the New York Rangers. And last year, they got to the conference final where they got swept by the upstart Florida Panthers, who kind of surprised everybody. On the Islanders' side, 2020, they got all the way to the conference final, lost in six against Tampa. They were the toughest out for Tampa, uh, both 2020 and then in 2021 as well, where uh, they lost in seven in the semifinal against Tampa Bay. So, yeah, the Islanders, uh, not big fans of playing Tampa Bay in the conference or semifinal, apparently. 2022, the Islanders missed the playoffs. 2023, uh, they lost in the first round against Carolina in six. So here we are again. Carolina looking to start the story the same as they did last year, hoping for a different ending. And the Islanders want a different start to the story than what we had last year. Jacob Slavin, 81 games, 6 goals, 31 assists, 37 points. Remarkable defenseman. We know how good he is. Come playoff time, he's that good and, and is capable of elevating his game further. His points totals this year, 
not bad either. Jake Gensel, since joining Carolina, has fit right in. 17 games, 6 goals, 17 assists, 23 points. The Islanders need to find a way to shut him down in the playoffs. Kuznetsov, a little bit quieter for him. 20 games, 2 goals, 5 assists, 7 points. But we know from the Washington Capitals Stanley Cup run in 2018, Kuznetsov can be really important that way. Uh, so, at, at least at this time at this time of year, you need a big goal. You can get it from Kuznetsov. On the Islanders' side, Anders Lee did get to 20 goals. Uh, 17 assists, 37 points in 81 games for him. The captain, they're going to need goals from him. Uh, Casey Zizekas, again, that physical game, he's capable of bringing that. Uh, the whole identity line I could have put on the board and said these guys could be huge in this. But Zizekas, 10 goals, 13 assists, 23 points in 70 games. And I had Slavin on one side. I had to have Pelic on this side. Pelic for similar reasons, just really good defensive defenseman. 58 games, 1 goal, 15 assists for Pelic this year for a total of 16 points. So... It's interesting because Carolina doesn't necessarily play that like really fast up tempo, but they they do play that defensive style. They do have a more attack based game than the Islanders, but I would not be surprised to see this series populated with two to one, three to one, three to two scores, probably some overtimes in there as well. Uh, the Islanders went to overtime a lot this year. Uh, Carolina not necessarily anywhere near as much, but at playoff time. Uh, there could be some some overtime here. I think this series is going to be closer than the 84% voting for the Hurricanes might believe, but I'm wearing Hurricanes as well, so I didn't go against any of the popular opinions. Again, uh, that's why they're popular opinions, but it's going to be interesting to see how many upsets we get in the East. I, I, I would be very surprised if we don't get at least a couple. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support, and we'll talk to you again soon.